Lookout Mountain Air Force Station, a photographic installation of the Aerospace Audiovisual Service, Military Airlift Command, and home of the 1352nd Photographic Group, containing facilities to accomplish all phases of photography. Staffed by both civilian and military filmmakers of the United States Air Force. The administrative function is housed in a portion of this modern building in the San Fernando Valley a 15-minute courier drive from the main gate. The organization's mission, photographic documentation of Air Force activities, the production of scientific films, technical films, training films, informational motion pictures, or the Atomic Energy Commission, or joint Army and Air Force exercises, for civil defense, for the Air Force, as well as other government agencies. Films requiring animation may get their start in this division. The artist inking this cell is only one of an experienced team with special skills in all phases of technical animation. The completed cell, as it is finally photographed here, must often effectively portray an abstract or extremely complex idea the workings of intricate mechanisms or a cross-section of an atomic weapon. The camera division is completely equipped for both stage and location photography. In just a moment, we'll see some clips from documentary coverage and the many productions that have passed through this laboratory. Laboratory operations require a high degree of skill and scientific control to process the many types of film handled here and exposed by not only our production unit, but others dispersed around the world. Sound requirements are fulfilled in a completely rebuilt and modern department. Incorporating equipment that will allow technicians to transfer 12 effects tracks simultaneously. How does this all come together? What are the films like that are produced here? Well, here in one of our projection rooms, let's have a seat and take a brief look at some of our typical accomplishments. The Air Force Missile Mission, starring Jimmy Stewart, produced and photographed here at Lookout Mountain to explain weapons and policy, to show how both planes and missiles are needed for our defense. Newscaster Walter Cronkite introduced and narrated another of our films, Alert in the Pacific, showing how and where the Air Force is deployed. In a series of people-to-people -people films, we are also helping the East to meet the West. A film entitled Blood Brothers, produced to help explain Philippine culture to American servicemen, was introduced by Ambassador Romulo. This portion of the film was shot on the beach in Manila. The local fire department produced the rain, a Navy landing craft created the waves, an Air Force helicopter produced the wind, the Marines supplied the amphibian duck, American and Philippine actors played the parts, and lookout mountain technicians directed the action. This combined effort added up to a dramatic and interesting motion picture. Screen actor Glenn Ford starred in Taiwan, Isle of Freedom. And from Taiwan, we moved on to make a similar film in Korea, explaining Koreans to Americans. Our technicians worked on stages in Korea, recording customs, some of them old and strange, some of them more familiar and shared with the people of other lands. A blend of precision flying by the United States Air Force Thunderbirds and the peoples of the Far East produced an Academy Award nominee called Breaking the Language Barrier. We have photographed Robert Stack, star of The Untouchables. Vic Morrow, Sergeant Saunders of Combat, another popular TV series. Kathy Crosby for a commercial on nursing. Bob Hope and Jerry Colonna, with a pitch on physical fitness. And James Arness, Marshall Dillon of the Gunsmoke series. 
They appeared in Department of the Army films, portions of which were shot by Lookout Mountain crews. Bob Cummings and his son starred in a film on Air Force Academy activities, a film used in the cadet recruiting campaign. Our stage has heard the voices of and played host to many celebrities from stage and screen, as well as high-ranking military and Department of Defense personnel. On the lighter side, we support the annual Bob Hope Christmas Tour. Each year, our representative provides technical photographic assistance and goes along with the comedian and his troop as they bring holiday cheer and a bit of warmth to American servicemen stationed throughout the world. Prior to the test ban, our camera crews range from the islands in the Pacific to the atomic test site in Nevada, documenting activities for film reports that told the story of nuclear weapons testing by the United States. During joint exercises like Desert Strike and Polar Siege, photographic personnel are deployed and work closely with units in the field to obtain documentary and record photography. It was at the Holloman test track where we photographed this chimp's preparation and test for the accelerated G's with which man has moved out into space. Using a special mount developed at Lookout Mountain, we recorded his high-speed run on this test sled. And we photographed this rocket launch at a slant range of 100,000 feet over the Pacific Island testing range. We also recorded the zero launch of an F-100 from its trailer bed. At times, cameras are run at high speed to record spectacular events like this napalm attack on a simulated Cuban Missile Guidance Control Van. The result? Slow motion photography for operational analysis personnel of the Tactical Air Command. Here it is at normal speed. Seven hundred pounds of napalm per tank. For communications, as well as surveillance and operation of remote cameras, to obtain the spectacular film you have just viewed, we have developed a video and VHF radio system. This equipment will allow our technicians to operate and monitor cameras from distances up to 20 miles. To show that supersonic jets can shoot down slow flying aircraft, we designed and built a wing pod to house the cameras mounted on an F-100 trailing this Thunder Chief. And recorded the kill of an H-43 drone helicopter. The difficulties in obtaining this type of air-to-air -air footage led to the development of a more sophisticated camera housing, adaptable to several supersonic aircraft, allowing our technicians to use a variety of cameras without additional modifications to the aircraft or camera pod. Here is a sample of the type of footage being obtained. Like all good cameramen, ours do almost anything and go anywhere to get the shots they need. Our cameramen are also qualified aerial photographers, for they must often take to the air itself, flying high in planes like this F-101 interceptor. Documenting significant Air Force events like this drop of the X-15 from its mother plane, or the flight of this U-2. The Thunderbirds, F-102s, F-104s, F-105s, F-106s, F-4Cs, F-101s. We have them all on film. Highly skilled still photographers are also assigned here 
operating a complete lab facility and producing transparencies like these. And color prints like these. Security rules are followed and records kept on all film issued or received. For stored in this vault are thousands of cans of irreplaceable and classified film. Millions of feet documenting the atomic energy program as well as Air Force footage, currently being produced at Lookout Mountain. Small wonder, nothing is left to chance. The doors are often firmly locked guarding those men and women who, like these negative cutters, must handle this film in their daily work. Some film, of course, is not classified. Here, a producer and editor agree on a sequence they'll use in a film being made for general release. The sequence chosen the launch of an Atlas missile at Vandenberg. There, at Vandenberg Air Force Base, we have a second photographic unit at work, the 1369th Photographic Squadron. Complete with a fully operational laboratory, processing instrumentation and documentary film of activities at this West Coast missile range. You think the plumbing in a missile is complex? Here, for example, is the recirculating system serving all developing machines in the film laboratory, an array of tanks and valves not usually associated with the job of making films. In addition to the modern laboratory, squadron activities are housed in eight buildings. This one houses the documentary photo department. Here's a typical camera crew at work shooting scenes of an atlas. Here's another. The footage they get may also be used in training films. The instrumentation photo section is charged with the installation and operation of all tracking and remote camera equipment at Vandenberg. Operational requirements call for camera coverage from all angles. This striped box mounted high on the Thor launcher contains a high-speed camera set to record locks line separation. This one will be set to get engine start. This 16mm Mitchell will get liftoff. Complete motion picture and still camera coverage is provided for every launch. All equipment checked out and ready to go so that when the countdown ends and the missile is fired, the cameras monitored from the blockhouse will roll and the men will be on station, tracking each missile on its ballistic flight downrange. Here, the M45 mount is used by squadron technicians to track a Thor launch. And here, they track Atlas as it leaves the pad. Recently, the 1369th absorbed both photographic personnel and facilities of the Point Arguello portion of the Pacific Missile Range. Formerly a Navy function, our squadron is now charged with the motion picture and still coverage of that vast launch complex as well as the Vandenberg facilities. Detachment 2 of the 1352nd Photographic Group, based at Colorado Springs, Colorado, supports Air Force activities in that area. Photographic equipment and trained technicians are available for almost any type of assignment, including production shooting for the Air Defense Command on the soundstage utilized by detachment personnel. Being minutes away from the Air Force Academy assures adequate film coverage of special events. In addition to coverage of activities like this, Detachment 2 cameramen are documenting the construction of the NORAD Underground Combat Operations Center at Cheyenne Mountain. At Green River, Utah, photographic instrumentation and documentary photography is being obtained for the Abreys and Athena programs. 
a program designed to study the phenomena and trajectory dynamics of re-entry vehicles. At March Air Force Base in Riverside, California, we have Detachment 7, covering SAC activities. This unit will provide the combat documentary photo team to support 15th Air Force deployments. Closer to home in Inglewood, California, we have Detachment 4, charged with both photographic and television support to the Space Systems and Ballistic Systems Divisions of the Air Force Systems Command. In addition to our stateside installations, we have Detachment 1 in the 49th State at Elmendorf Air Force Base, Anchorage, Alaska. This unit covers Air Force activities ranging all over the largest state in the Union. From bases in the Aleutian Islands to snow-covered runways in the far north. Our crews get scenes like this one, a C-123 taking off from Utopia, an airstrip built on the side of a mountain with a 32-degree downhill runway. A far cry from the snow and ice is Detachment 3, another of our permanent locations at Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii, covering PACAF and USAF events in the islands and the hub of our photographic effort in the Pacific. With Detachment 6 located on Yamato Air Station in Japan and Detachment 5 at Tonsonut Airfield in the Republic of Vietnam. The Vietnam unit has been covering the counterinsurgency war since January 1963. Originally housed in an old French barracks building, the entire operation is presently contained in two modified house trailers, located just a city block from the 2nd Air Division headquarters. The unit is air transportable, has its own power supply, a fully equipped still photo laboratory, as well as facilities to support the motion picture portion of this combat documentary unit. Our crews cover a variety of events. Obtaining footage for film reports that cover Air Force activities in the counterinsurgency operations of Southeast Asia. Where filming is a battle with the elements as well as the Viet Cong rebels. Documentary coverage is obtained by our photographers riding alongside pilots on combat missions in Vietnam and by remotely operated cameras housed in our camera pods mounted on the underside of the aircraft wing. This aerial strike footage will appear in briefing films. The eruption of Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii supplied some spectacular footage. Things may get real hot at times, but our cameramen get the picture. Have you ever seen a river of molten lava? Or the catch of an Agena capsule high above the Pacific Ocean? Cameramen of the 1352nd have recorded these events on film. For no matter where or when a United States Air Force event takes place, whether it be the plains of our own Midwestern states or the Himalayan mountains of Asia, 1352nd personnel will be there to get it all on film. Putting this all together, it adds up to seven detachments, a squadron, and a group headquarters at Lookout Mountain Air Force Station with camera crews covering over 98 million square miles, half of the world.